a big girl salmon. And this is called the coho. She's from the Gold Stream River. And I got her from the hatchery so that we would have something to look at and explore. Her eggs were taken at the hatchery and they're going to be looked after. It's like a nursery. All the babies are going to be raised at the hatchery and then they're going to be released back into the Gold Stream River. The boy fish get really red when they're ready to have their family. They get this big hook nose and that's what the changes are the boy fish so that they can protect their family. This is the Colquitts Creek and the watershed, which also includes Swan Creek. It starts, uh, comes in from the ocean at Ogden Point. That's where people will see it actually coming to the ocean. Comes up through the gorge and then Portage Inlet. And there are two creeks that flow into Portage Inlet. Colquitts is one of them. The other one you will, I'm sure you know, is Craigflower. Essentially, it's a project that's overseen by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and it's one of the only volunteer-operated coho counting fences on South Vancouver Island, where we are providing numbers that feed into their stock assessment system. Have a good time with your family. There's a lot of reasons to protect urban streams. Um, if our children grow up in a built environment and they're not connected to nature, and then they won't understand nature and they'll be less likely in the future to help protect nature. And whether it's within their, their neighborhood or in the, in the, in the, in the greater um, sphere of the world. So by uh, enhancing, restoring urban streams and bringing wildlife back to these streams, fish and wildlife, is that it'll connect the children with nature, despite the fact they're living in the city. I learned that there are different animals besides salmon, like beavers and minks. This is a stick that's been cut down by a beaver. I learned if the, the little fin in the back of the fish is gone into hatchery fish, and if it's still there, it's a wild fish. The coho salmon in Colquitts and the ones that run up into Swan Creek and up the main stem of Colquitts, those fish are a wild strain of coho salmon. They have not been hatchery augmented. Salmon was here first, and we don't really want to um, destroy their habitat or anything, so we have to protect it like this. So no like construction can come in here. Oh, no fish are here or anything. I'm just gonna take this down. It's not so much uh, the information for counting the fish, which is very important, because that gives us a handle on how healthy the watershed is. But we also feel there's a very important aspect of stewardship attached to this, which tells people that even though in the summer they may see a plastic bag stuck in hanging over them or a shopping cart in the water, this is a productive urban stream that has a significant run of coho salmon and it's something that we all need to do our best to protect. We're doing habitats and communities in science right now and I thought this would be a great free learning educational base for the students. It's good to see what's in their community and what's going on around their community so they're able to help out in their community and give others knowledge that they may not have about um, aspects in their community. Traditionally our counts here which started in 2001 they vary quite dramatically depending on the abundance expected to return. Our lowest number in, in, since 2001 is about 110 fish. Our highest number was 675 fish, which occurred in 2003. Our average number is around 300 fish. In 2011, just before the oil spill occurred on Swan Creek, we had actually counted around 325 fish. This is the new stewardship group starting and everybody's getting to know each other, so it's kind of cool. I mean, Art got a great perspective having lived on the stream for how many years? 32 years on Swan Creek. Um, Sanic built a riffle next to his place and he says, 
Now it sounds like a stream because he's hearing the, you know, the, the sound of the water going through the riffle. We're at Swan Lake Christmas Hill Nature Sanctuary yeah, today with Ian Bruce and, and Francesca from Peninsula Streams. And we're showing you the work that we've been doing in the stream restoration and also the reforestation around the, for, around the stream edges. Well, this is actually Blankensop Creek. Um, it's on the upside side of Swan Lake. Um, we call it Swan Creek from the outflow down towards the Colquitts River. And this is a site where last fall I saw two, two coho, which was quite wonderful. Um, because we suspected they were coho, we'd have trapped coho fingerlings in here a couple of years before, so I was pretty sure there were more coho. We did a, uh, a few small spawning areas this uh, fall in order to provide some spawning um, a platform, spawning gravel for the fish that, um, that we just saw at the fence um, downstream on the Colquitts. So the idea is, is that we put gravel in behind what's called a rock riffle and the riffle does a lot of different things. It uh, retains the gravel back, it provides vertical control in the stream, it um, uh, provides the undersides of the rocks in the riffle, provide substrate for insects, the salmon eat, and also it oxygenates the water. So there's lots of reason to have rocks in a creek. Part of our grade three program is we, we send trees home, little plugs that are about this big, to grade three students. They grow them up over the summer and then bring them back. We're doing some plantings around here in order to provide shade and uh, cover and also bank control in the area. Now, if you look, there's some old, big old trees around here that are uh, non-native willow trees, and they're very, very old, and they're probably going to die soon. So what we're doing right now is we're planting uh, in order to uh, plan for succession. So the plantings we have now will grow up so that there'll be some trees here when the big trees die. So we're trying to think uh, 20, 25 years into the future when mm -hmm. we do this. Historically, we would have had cutthroat trout, um, coho salmon, and there was a fairly good population of those up until about 1985. That was the last time that there was a really good population um, th that was in here. Since the development of well, urbanization and the highway, and uh, particularly the nutrients that are coming into the lake, the lake is quite nutrient rich and so it gets really quite warm, too warm in the summer for a fish. Um, and so we are very concerned about that fact. We're doing water quality sampling on a regular basis now and trying to see what we can actually do to remediate and improve the water quality coming into the lake so projects like this help and also uh, the water quality in the lake. Peninsula Streams is a, an organization of uh, several member groups. Um, we operate on the Saanich Peninsula and now we're operating um, into Saanich in the Colquitt system. We've been incorporated as a charity since 2002. We provide uh, support to community groups um, that want to do restoration on their local streams. We provide environmental education to uh, grade threes and grade sixes throughout the school district 63. And um, we provide opportunities for people to come out, get their hands dirty, work on the streams, maybe touch a fish once in a while, but uh, to feel that they're part of, 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 of their local environment. I've always um, been concerned about the bank eroding, and it actually has, um, to the point where trees on my side of the, the creek have fallen over against trees on the other. Freshwater streams are important not just to, well, they're important for people for recreation, but they're, they're part of our whole groundwater system. They're part of our, all the wildlife and, you know, everything that re requires water. Through educating people about the best protocols with uh, handling uh, heating oil, with handling storm water, and having the uh, municipalities make sure that contractors are m maintaining standards that avoid uh, spills into the uh, creeks and what have you, 
and uh, trying to minimize the runoff when you have major uh, rain events that uh, toxic runoff from roads and stuff like that. That's probably the best we can do. They can do things like be careful about the types of things that they use in their homes, make sure that they're not products that will really affect the water, uh, that they don't dump things on their ground like paint or oil, um, and that they're just conscious of what they're doing. They can stay out of their freshwater streams and keep their dogs out of the streams as, when there's fish there. All those things really help. This is David's first volunteer, first volunteer event and uh, he's gone swimming. I think urban streams are actually getting better. Um, there's more challenges with stormwater, but um, uh, municipalities like uh, Saanich is starting to recognize that streams are important. They have a new uh, stream and stormwater department that's going to be focusing on streams. I think that's a really good step. These are wild fish, and it's amazing that with a population that we have in Saanich to have these kind of values in this creek. That's truly amazing and something that we should hold dear. If you live in a healthy um, uh, ecological system, you have a better community. Your, your, your people are happier, your kids are outdoors more, they learn more about nature, and generally it's a healthier uh, place to live. You can come to Swan Lake and Nature Sanctuary anytime and volunteer here. We're always looking for help. <laughs> Peninsula Streams has uh, many projects, uh, many different sites, and we try to encourage people to work uh, in their neighborhood, but if they want to work, you know, around the region, that, that works as well. So we have general volunteer lists, and then we have specific, um, particular stream volunteer lists.